Thank you, Aiko, for joining us and being a participant in the Represent Los Gatos Oral History Project. We're so excited that you're here and you're able to carve out some time for us to share your story. Um, would you be able to introduce yourself right now to us? Yes, my full name is Mei Aiko Sato. And what else? <laughs> um, do you mind sharing when you were born? I was born in Salinas, California in 1935, August, and um, I just barely started first grade there, like a month, and then we were called into the um, internment camps in Boston, Arizona, and I was there for four years, and I came to Los Gatos in the summer of 1945. And I've been here ever since. Okay, great. And um, can you talk a little bit about uh, what your parents did in Salinas? Uh, they were farmers. Uh, my, uh, my grandmother and grandfather, my mother's parents, and my parents, and an uncle. And I have two sisters, an older sister and a younger sister. And we were there, I can't remember when we left, but anyway, I came to Los Gatos in 1945, and I went to grammar school, I think I started the fifth grade here, at Cambrian Grammar School, which is not no longer there, but it's where uh, there's a Lunardi's on Los Gatos Boulevard near Kirtner. Across the street from there, there was a Cambrian Grammar School, and um, I went, went there until I went to Los Gatos High School. I graduated eighth grade at Cambrian and went to Los Gatos High School and graduated from there in 19, I think, 53. And um, before we started at Cambrian, um, Mr. Tom Yuki, Takeo Yuki, my, um, I guess he's my uncle-in-law he went to the school and talked to the principal. It was a Mr. Bagby. There's a school named after him here in San Jose and told him that, you know, there were about seven of us kids going to start his grammar school. And so we never had any problems. There wasn't anything racial um, problems all during uh, grammar school. And even in high school, I never had any problems. And in Los Gatos High School, there was only about five or six uh, Asians in the entire school at that time. And that's it so far. And I grew up on the Yuki Farm, which is called the North 40. And um, I left there in the late, I think about 1970 and moved to my own condo here. And, but I still go to the farm, to the ranch, we call it the ranch. And uh, we celebrate Christmas. We started with four little families and now it's grown to like a hundred people that we meet on Christmas Eve. And then also we have what's called mochitsuki, the rice pounding that we do like a week before Christmas. And you make the uh, mochi patties to eat on New Year's morning. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind a, of... Yeah, that's a wonderful tradition. Have, has that is. been going on since you were a little girl? Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's um, been nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so my, you you grew up then in Salinas until you were first grade then, so you don't really I, remember too much yeah. about that. No, um, I don't remember much about it. I see. Um, and I, I, it was just barely, I just barely started first grade. And then I think I started second grade in the camp. Second, third, fourth. Second, third, fourth. And then when I came out, I started fifth grade. And uh, were you able to 
go to the same uh, internment camp as the rest of your extended family then? Yes, my mother, my father, my grandmother, my uncle, which my mother's brother, and then the three of us, three daughters. Mm -hmm. oh, we were together. Right. You have two sisters, right? I have two sisters, yes. Um, what we, are their names, and are they older or younger? I have an older sister. Her name is Jane, and she lives a couple miles from me here. And I have a younger sister named Lois, and she lives a couple of miles. We live kind of in a triangle, so I, I see them all the time. And then I, I go over to um, Tom and Carol Yuki's mm -hmm. a lot. I'm great friends with Carol. Mm -hmm. so. And you mentioned that Tom, Tom is your uncle or your cousin? Tom, there's a... Takeo Yuki, but they called him Tom, too. Mm -hmm. That was the father of Tom, right. Yuki, the present Tom Yuki. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who's married to Carol. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, and so what was it? I guess you, you said you, you didn't have any problems when you came to Los Gatos um, in the fifth grade with schooling and all of that. So what was it like going to school um, here in town? It was typical, you know, went to the football games and um, I went back there a few years ago and took a class, an evening class. And it, the, the school is still the same, the main building. But um, the rest of it is all been built up, you know, the gymnasium and the, everything else, all the other outbuildings, that's all been new. But um, yes, it still looks the same from the street. Mm, yeah, it's a beautiful school. It is, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, did you... and the graduation was always at the top of the building. Yeah. You know, yeah. it sloped down over the lawn. It's, I think it's a gorgeous school, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to uh, shut down the library early on graduation day because oh, really? it just gets so crowded and the parking and all that. Oh, um, yeah. We would get trapped in there uh, if we were still working at that time. So we oh, always wow. um, close down the library on those days. <laughs> oh. Yeah, um, it's, it's a big event for sure. Right. Um, so then were you involved in any, I guess, extracurricular activities or, or clubs when you were going to uh, LGHS? Uh, the only thing I remember joining was Future Homemakers, I think it was called. Oh. Some kind of homemaking and I know I, I entered things into the county fair, Santa Clara County Fair, and I won a couple of blue ribbons oh, or great. sewing or something. I, I can't re exactly remember, but um, any other, I can't remember joining in. I know my older sister, Jane, was in the drum corps. Oh. The, it was a, and they were in kind of a Spanish outfit, and it was a drum corps that went with the, they marched in parades and things. I can't remember, I don't know what my younger sister, what she was in, because I was gone by the time she went there. Mm -hmm. um, well, it sounds like you had a, a very, a, I guess, a very good uh, schooling experience here in town. And uh, oh, did you yeah. keep did you keep in touch with any of your friends from, from the schools you went to? Um, not really. I had uh, one friend that I met, a couple of friends I met for lunch, let's see, about seven, eight years ago, and I hadn't seen them since we graduated. It was really nice, but I think one of them has since passed away. So a lot of them, I think, um, have passed away. Mm -hmm. um, what was I, I was going to say something. 
oh, I was in a secretarial um, where I went out to work in a doctor's office in town mm -hmm. uh, in my senior year, getting oh. a little office experience in a medical office. But I can't even remember the doctor's name. Mm -hmm. Was it for me one, of my, one of my classmates, her name was Ruth Hubble, and her father was Carl Hubble, and he was an attorney in town. And I went to work for him uh, part time. I started out part time, and it was on University Avenue. And there was a French laundry near the corner of University and Santa Cruz Avenue. And uh, the law, uh, law office was right next door to the French Laundry. And then there's a stone house next to the former French Laundry. And the French couple, an elderly French couple lived in that stone house. And I believe that stone house is still there on University Avenue. Yeah, so I'm bringing back memories from a long time ago. That's interesting. I think it's right across the street from where the Carnegie Library would have been, right? Where the um, where the church is now? There's an Episcopalian church, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, and uh, uh, Old Town was a, was a grammar school, and that mm -hmm. became Old Town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's changed a lot since I was there. And we used to go to the theater downtown all the time, all the weekends. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. Who did you typically spend time with, uh, like outside of school? Uh, like, did you have friends that you hung out with or went to the movies with, or was it mostly with family? Most of it was us on the farm, the, the Yuki family, the Abe family, Ted and Rick Abe. Ted Abe was quite an athlete and they were going to induct him into the Los Gatos Hall, uh, Athletic Hall of Fame this past summer, but because of the uh, coronavirus, it was postponed till next year. And uh, uh, well, we were several, about three, four miles outside of town, you know, by Lark and Los Gatos Boulevard. So it was all country between there and Shannon Road. So, I mean, we we didn't have, we couldn't drive. We were too young to drive. So we couldn't go into town except if one of the parents drove us there. So we couldn't hang out downtown, you know, like kids do now. Mm. But uh, other than that, I had a girlfriend that I used to, she lived up um, at the end of Santa Cruz Avenue. There was kind of a hill, and then there were homes up there. One of my girlfriends lived up there, and I remember going to her place and staying overnight. But we didn't we didn't do things a lot because you know we couldn't drive. Yeah, mm -hmm. especially when we were in the first couple of grades, mm -hmm. uh, freshman and sophomore year until I turned 16. And then I think I learned to drive. And uh, then I got around. But I um, I was more involved with our, our church, our Buddhist church, which was downtown San Jose. Mm -hmm. so, and you were involved yeah. as, a, as a teenager in the church? As a teenager at the church, yes. I think I went to Sunday school there. And as I became an adult and went out and started working, I joined the church choir. And then there was a youth club that I joined there. So times were different than now. So you kind of congregated with, you know, um, your people, the people you're comfortable with. And um, after, yeah, 
after I graduated from high school, I didn't keep in touch very much with my classmates. Mm -hmm. um, they, a, lot, a lot of them went off to different colleges and I went to San Jose State for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, did you, I guess, feel, was there a lot of uh, youth members at your church then from other cities and areas, not from Los Gatos? Right. They were from all over Santa Clara Valley. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, and so you mentioned well, that. Go ahead, go ahead. Most of my friends at that time after, during college and after college were friends from the church. Mm, I see. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to ask, uh, did your family, so you lived with the Yuki then on the same, was it like, in a separate house or did you guys all live in we're, we all had separate houses gotcha okay but then we were each other's playmates because yeah it's a ranch and there's we had no way of of traveling to town so we kind of were our own little neighborhood right it's a the whole community over there <laughs> right. which is great yeah and the property went all the way to los gatos creek from Los Gatos Boulevard all the way to Los Gatos Creek from Lark Avenue to Burton. So we had the, we were able to roam around all over the ranch and um, in the summertime, we'd go down to the creek, pack up a box lunch and go down there. And we would pick um, uh, watercress from the creek and the creek was, you know, the water was a lot cleaner then. Mm. And um, there were little, um, what are those little crabs? Little shrimp like thing. What do you call them? I, all of a sudden I got a blank. Not um, crawfish. Or like, yeah, um, crawfish. Crawdads. Crawfish or crawdads, yeah. We would pick those. And, um, when uh, they built Highway 17, right through the middle of the property, Mr. Yuki, the senior Yuki, he built a tunnel to connect the two pieces of property. And so we would, and then on, there was a old house there um, off of which is now Oka Road. And it was called, the, we used to call it the Libby House because it was, that Libby, um, there's a canning company, Libby, and that was their summer home. And they had an attached, like a, a bar, um, it was, there was a bar and it was hardwood floors like for dancing. And uh, we used to go down there and play a lot. Yeah. So, and that's where Tom uh, Jr. lives now, Tom and Carol, that's where their house is now. But um, yeah, we roam all over the ranch. There was a lot of land, but, and you know, everybody left their doors unlocked on the property. You didn't have to lock doors and everyone would come, we'd, you know, go play in, in the yard area but also we go to each other's homes. And I remember my grandmother, she used to make soba noodles by hand. Oh, she would wow. hand roll it and uh, slice it and boil it. And um, all the kids would say, when your grandmother makes your, the soba noodles, call us. And we had a round table and the big round table in the kitchen. And we would all sit around while she would knead the dough and stretch it out and then cut it and then boil it. And at, also at um, when we had the mochi making time, we didn't have freezers then. Uh, maybe you had a tiny little portion of your refrigerator had a freezer, but that wasn't enough to keep the mochi. So my grandmother would 
we would do five pounds of rice, sweet rice at a time. They would steam it, pound it, and Mr. Yuki bought, got all the equipment from Japan and um, where you, the stone, the granite stone where you pound the rice and everything. Well, we would all make it into round patties, you know, like cookie size patties, these rice things. But my grandmother would make one big slab and it, when it would get hard, then she would cut it. And the kids would all say, when your grandmother starts to cut the mochi, call us. <laughs> and we would all sit around the table and watch her cut the, uh, the mochi and we'd keep it in water. And that was the only way to preserve it at that time. Yeah, so yeah, thinking back, um, brings back a lot of memories. And lately, um, Carol got us, there's about seven of us women, we get together and we make pickles in the, in the old barn. And the barn is fixed up with uh, all the cooking equipment for um, when we make mochi and, you know, there's gas there and sinks with big, you know, faucets and everything. And uh, so then we started making pickles and selling them and they were quite popular, but since the um, pandemic started, we, we had to give that up too. A lot of things, social things have stopped and it's right. a little unsettling. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Have you been able to see um, your family pretty regularly though, despite not yeah. having those big gatherings anymore? Yes, I see both my sisters um, quite a bit, at least once a week. And I see Carol too, Carol and Tom. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, Daniel, did you have any more questions about like, I guess, childhood and that section of Iko's life? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was kind of just looking at uh, just an aerial view on a map of the land. And I was wondering um, if you know, so like, from what I can tell, based on how you described it, it goes up to like where the Jewish center is, the JCC. Um, yes. Was that, did that used to be also included in the land? Was that? Yes. Okay. You know the school on the corner? Mm-hmm. There's, yeah. there's a, like a church school. I think yes. that was part of the property too. Okay. But the UT property. And, I, and then I'm, not, I'm not sure of the Jewish community center was part of it or not, I don't remember, but next to the Jewish community center, there's a piece of open land, right? Correct, yeah, yeah. And that That's why went I saw all the, the way, trees. yeah, that went all the way to the creek, Walsgata Creek, and that that's still part of the Yuki property. And I remember when the uh, tennis club went up, the tennis club right next to, Right, was that also part of the land? Like, were these parts of land that um, Tom... I can't remember if that was part of the land or not. But the uh, the Oka, uh, the name Oka, mm -hmm. the, the road, Oka Road, the family of Sam Oka used to live at the end of that road, and that was the property the, it was sort of con uh, connected. I think we used to go over to, oh, I know, I remember now. Mr. and Mrs. Oka had a home there and they had a son named uh, Sam and he married a Betsy Oka and Betsy Oka is my younger sister's sister-in-law. Oh. Her, Betsy Oka was my sister Lois's husband, they were brother and sister. And did gotcha. you get the name Betsy Oka from Carol? I did not. Oh, it, my sister talked to Betsy and she said she had a video of Sam being interviewed and they lived there before World War II, before yes. the German camp. So they're That's really right. long time residents of Los Gatos. And she lives off of Winchester, overlooking Bazona. 
Oh, it's a okay. Lovely home overlooking. You, you go out in your backyard, you think, oh, you, this is heaven overlooking the zone of the lake. Yeah. 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 It feels like some of the last um, undeveloped area as far as within within Los Gatos. Um, did they have when you were a kid on the on the ranch? Did they have you do any work in the fields, or were you mostly kind of free to to run around and play with with the family? We, we used to work for Sam Olka during the summer, picking apricots and prunes, and then also they had a we would um, we had a dehydrating system where we would um, go there and. We would cut the cocks and lay them out on these long trays, and then they would uh, uh, dry them in the yeah. drying shed. And that's what we did during the summer: is picking apricots and cutting apricots. And also, we uh, there was a farm of uh, more north toward the Cambrian area, uh, and we picked raspberries in the summer. I mean, you know, we didn't have jobs like there were no McDonald's and those fast food places to work in. And so it was all agricultural type things. And I remember working in a cannery cutting peaches and apricots in downtown San Jose somewhere. Oh. Huh. I don't know how we got there, but yeah. Um, you know, this is when we were still in grammar school and maybe high school. That's the kind of job you had at summertime. Mm -hmm. Whereas my sister, younger sister's children, they all worked at that McDonald's on Los Gatos Boulevard when they were in high school. Oh. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> times are different. That's yeah. quite a change between generations. Yeah, it, it was really <laughs> carefree and just running around on the ranch with my relatives because we were all sort of re related. And we all came there from camp, uh, our camp because we couldn't go back to Salinas because um, I heard that the Salinas National Guard, I guess, had a hard time during the war in, the, in Japan, I guess, or they and so we weren't welcome back to Salinas. That's why Mr. Yuki Sr. bought this property in Los Gatos. But he still had a business in Salinas. But uh, so that's how we came there. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, did your, did your parents, um, and since you're around all these families, do you remember the adults ever talking about their experiences around town or? Did they have any trouble conducting business or going going around town, or did they feel more or less welcome? Um, they, they never mentioned that. But the minute I could drive when I was 16, I had to take my mother, because my dad would be working, and my mom, I would take her grocery shopping to a, it was a purity grocery store on Santa Cruz Avenue. Um, about where, where is that? A block from the theater, block south of the theater. I don't know what's there now. I remember taking her to grocery shopping and on rainy days, I'd take her to the laundromat to dry the clothes because we had a washing machine but no dryer. <laughs> yes, things like that. And I don't remember any being mistreated anywhere. But I remember the one thing I do remember is when we were in the grocery store and sometimes my mother was born and raised here in California in Salinas. So she spoke English, but sometimes she'd speak to me in Japanese in the store and I would tell her, Mom, don't speak Japanese, speak English. I remember that. Yeah. Do you so. feel like what did you ever hear that from any classmates or other people's no. families? No. You know, I never, ever had any um, anything like that happen to me 
all during grammar school and high school. But once I was working, I got a job. Home. I worked in a law office in San Jose for 16 years. And then I went to work at the Prune Yard Shopping Center. I worked for the owner who built the shopping mm. center. And he's still in Los Gatos and I still work for him uh, part time. Anyway, one day I went shopping from across the Prune Yard. There was a a longs i think the longs is still there um yes it's cbs now yeah oh yes it's cbs now okay i went up santa uh campbell avenue to, at campbell avenue to bascom and i made a right turn and i guess i it, it was three lanes going north and three lanes going south and i turned north to go to CVS and I went into CVS and I parked and this girl, a young blonde teenage girl came up to me and she started yelling at me and calling me all kinds of names and go back to where you came from. And mm -hmm. I just ignored her and I went into the store and she followed me there and she kept yelling at me all through the store and I didn't buy, end up buying anything. I came out of there and when I got back to the car, she was still yelling at me. And when I went to my car, the whole driver's side of the car was keyed. She's, she's keyed my whole car side of the car. That's the one and only time I've ever had anything happen to me like that. And that was when I was in my 30s. So it was very, um, unnerving, very, um, I, I had never experienced anything like that ever. And uh, so, yeah, that's the one time. Wow. All through the, you know, my younger years, I never had any problem. And I always had friends, and Caucasian, especially Caucasian friends when I was in Los Angeles, because all the only people that were Asian were my relatives. <laughs> yeah. And then when I went to San Jose State, it, it was, they didn't have a community college at that time. The only, there was only San Jose State. So I went in as, and I just went there for two years. And then I think this next year after I went there, San Jose City College started. So, and then uh, in our area, there was only Los Gatos High School and Campbell High School. And then there was, you know, San Jose, downtown San Jose, but there weren't all these grammar schools and high schools like they have now. There was no middle school. There was only grammar school and high school. And just, uh, so, and everything was all still country, you know, orchards. And uh, so it isn't like it is now where it's just wall to wall buildings and houses and everything. So I've seen it grow, you know, grow through all these years. But I miss all the blossoms in the, in the spring, you know, all the prune orchards and apricots. And, and you know, you used to go up on Blossom Hill Road and overlook the valley and you see all these beautiful blossoms. Yeah, nothing like that anymore. Wow. No, that's yeah. Beautiful. I I was wondering if um do you remember if your your parents or any of the families invited other people from around town to the ranch, or was it mostly just your families that were there at the ranch? It was just mostly family. Mm -hmm. And um, how was, what did you study when you were at San Jose State? How was it? Uh, sorry, what did you study while you were at San Jose? Uh, I think I was studying mostly um, secretarial because I wanted to become a secretary. I mean, there weren't that many opportunities for women. Mostly they were in 
to secretarial, um, nursing, um, what else? Bookkeeping, that kind of thing. You know, we, right. we women didn't go into engineering and law and all that at that time. You were either a homemaker or you became a secretary or a nurse. Those were kind of your options. And so then I went to work for Carl Hubble. Uh, he was a lawyer in law status. And I was there for, mm, I can't remember, maybe 10 years. And then went to a larger law firm in downtown San Jose. Um, for 16 years. And then I went to work for the owner of the prune yard, Fred Sahadi. He still lives in law status. Mm. And that's where I'm still at. In, in uh, we sold the, the prune yard shopping center and the towers and everything. And he owned a couple of restaurants in the, in the shopping center. And, uh, uh, but now we're located in law status again, a small office. So that's that. Um, did your, I guess your parents and the adults in all those four families that you lived nearby to, um, did they sort of encourage their children, including you to, I guess, sort of leave the farm or did they want you guys to sort of be nearby and, and help out and you know things like that? Um I'm trying to remember. No, I think they just let us become whatever we wanted to. My sister, my older sister, um Oh, I know San Jose Junior College was within San Jose State at that time. And my young older sister graduated from the um, junior college and got her AA degree. Mm -hmm. But um, I and my younger sister would, went to UCSF nursing school in San Francisco. And uh, she graduated from Berkeley. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess she always wanted to be a nurse. I always wanted to just be a secretary. And that's what I ended up doing, becoming a legal secretary. Mm -hmm. So. That's great. Yeah. Does most of the family still uh, live here in the, in the South Bay area? Or um, have they spread out? My... My both my sisters and I live here, um, Los Gatos, San Jose border, and uh, the other. Let's see, we all the others all went to school either San Jose State or Santa Clara University of Santa Clara, or the office. I think the boys went to UC Berkeley, and. One became a dentist and one became a podiatrist. And uh, let's see. Tom, let's see, he went to work for, I can't remember where he went. But anyway, he ended up running the family business. Um, and you mentioned that one of the Abe's was uh, very accomplished in sports. Uh, which yes. sport was that? He's the one that became a dentist, went to UCSF uh, oh. dentistry, and you know, he had a business in Los Altos as a dentist, but he um, passed away fairly early. And he was very athletic, and I was going through my yearbook, my Los Gatos High School yearbook, and he's oh. in... From the freshman year, he was in every sport available, football, track, basketball, and he was, I noticed in all the pictures. Yes, and they just, um, 
I guess they went through the high school records and realized that he was quite a sportsman. And so they were going to put him into the Los Gatos Athletic Hall of Fame, like I said. And yeah. I guess they're still planning to do that next summer, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hopefully all nice. of this will be, will be over by then. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And what was his first name again? It was, uh, did you know his name? Ted. Ted. Okay. Ted Abe. Okay. Yeah, A-B-E. Yeah. And um, his younger brother, Rick, um, he didn't, he and Penny Yuki, Tom Yuki's younger sister, Penny, and Rick, um, by then, Delmar High School had opened, which is now the Camden, there's a Camden Park shopping center there. That was Camden High School. And by then, they had... Um, segregated the school areas, so they couldn't go to Los Gatos High School. So they had to go to um, Del Mar. Oh. So they were the two younger of the of the seven of us. There are six or seven of us. When you say segregated, do you mean by by location? Like, uh, because they lived in a certain area, yeah. they had to go? Right, correct. And this was in what, what year about? 1950s. Let's see, when would that have been? 50s? It was in the 50s, I think, because I graduated in 53, 53. and they were, they were like five years, six years younger than me. Okay, so almost yeah. 1960, about, yeah. Right. Um, when you were growing up on the farm, was there you mentioned that you would get like these part-time summer jobs at other farms and did um i guess did the farm that you grew up on was there hired help and things like that during the summers and um, no we had, what did they have on the property walnut trees i think mm -hmm. and my father and tom Yuki, the junior Tom Yuki's uncle, uh, and another, there was another uncle, Hideo Abe, that was Mrs. Yuki's brother. Those three worked on the farm there. It was originally a vineyard when we came, and then they planted um, uh, walnut, walnut trees. trees. And then Mr. Yuki bought this property up in the Santa Cruz Mountains on Summit Road. I don't know how many acres are up there, but uh, they would work up there on that property. And then um, he bought this beach property in Piscadero, California. Because um, when we were in Salinas, my grandmother knew somebody in Piscadero and we would drive from Salinas to Piscadero, it would be an all-day drive. And um, we would go and pick seaweed. And we would bring home the seaweed and wash it and dry it and use it for the rest of the year. And uh, we used to do that before we went to the camps. And so when we came back, my grandmother told Mr. Yuki, this is where we would go pick the seaweed and pick up the periwinkles and we'd boil the periwinkles on the, on the beach in water and you'd, you'd dig out the, the meat from the periwinkles and eat it. That was fun. Anyway, he decided to buy that piece of property so that we could always go there and have, be able to pick the seaweed and so forth. And we, they still have the property there and it's, there's no uh, housing on that property but we all go there to, to have big, huge beach parties. <laughs> and uh, uh, there was something else I was going to mention. Oh, I can't think of it now. <laughs> <laughs> That's OK. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it um, seems like the family's touched a lot of parts of the, of the coast. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I was 
gonna ask. So, um, you've basically been living in town, you know, ever since fifth grade, and uh, um, that probably means you raised your your children in town too. Um, so, what was that like to, um, I guess, be a parent in Los Gatos? I never had, I never married or had children. Oh, I'm so sorry. And my older, my older <laughs> sister never had children. She had mm -hmm. married and um, my younger sister is the one that had three children. And they're the ones that all worked at McDonald's during high gotcha. school. Gotcha. They graduated okay. from uh, Lee High School. Mm -hmm. And they all went to like Alta Vista Grammar School and um Union Middle School. It's all there near uh, Blossom Hill and Union and Los Gatos Boulevard. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, let's see, what else? Sorry, I thought you said it was your daughters who worked at McDonald's. <laughs> oh, no, sorry, my younger nieces. sister. Yeah. yeah, my nieces, my two nieces, and my nephew. My nephew owns it, the Ace Hardware on at Lark and Los Gatos, um, sorry, um, oh. Bas Los Gatos Boulevard. There's an Ace Hardware. I heard he was on TV last night on Channel 2. They were interviewing him about air purifiers. Air purifiers. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So he, you know? uh, his, name is, his name is Brian Matsumoto, and he owns the Ace Hardware. Yeah. And the my two nieces, one lives in Mountain View and the other one lives in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So, but we're all still basically around here. Yeah, yeah. But the other um, cousins, my cousins, my family was small. We we only just had my mother, father, grandparents. My grandfather died in Salinas. My grandmother died here when we came to Los Gatos. And it was just my parents and the three of us. And my uncle moved to Salinas, and he had three sons. But uh, the Yuki family is mainly our our whole, we call it the clan. And, uh, yeah. Um, they, but they're, those, the children of the, after the first generation, generation, the second generation, they've all scattered. They went to school in Southern California, New York, and um, all over Boston, and you know they're all. But a, mo a lot of them have come back here, but some went to Southern California. One married somebody in Japan, and one another one lives in New Zealand. So now they're all getting scattered. Yeah, but we all try to meet at Christmas Eve and for Mochizuki. They all seem to come together at the ho during the holidays. Mm -hmm. So that's why they, we have like 100 people at Christmas Eve. But with the pandemic this year, I don't think we're having any of those. It's too bad. Yeah, that is. Mm -hmm. are, you, um, are you part of any other groups? Are you still active in the church? And are you part of any other social or political groups around town? Um, no. Uh, with the church, I don't know if you know of this Obon Festival that happens every July uh, at our church, the San Jose Buddhist Church on North Fifth Street. Um, other than that, um, no, and but I, ever since I turned 25, my I went with a church group to Japan. My one and only, my first time that I went there, and um, my mother was born here, but my father came here to Salinas when he was like 18 years old, and um, he was born in 1898, and he lived to be 100 years old. And we celebrated his birthday on his 100th birthday. And uh, uh, I've been traveling every every year. I My first trip to Japan, it was five weeks. 
back then you could afford to do that. You know, everything was a lot cheaper. But every year after that, I traveled all over Europe and uh, uh, oh, Asia and South, not South America, but Central America. So I've been traveling a lot. That was my big joy in life. But uh, eight years ago, I started um, kidney dialysis treatment. So it kind of restricts me. But I was able to still travel to New York. I went to New York City a couple of times. And I went to Seattle. I went to Hawaii a few times since I've been on dialysis. But you have to schedule your treatments, you know, three times a week. So kind of cuts into your time. So uh, yeah. I've been kind of sticking close to home, especially with the pandemic. I, I'm just going to dialysis and I still work part time. And other than that, it's been staying home and it's getting a little boring. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, oh, I used to, I joined a jazzercise club. It was at uh, Van Meter's, not Van Meter. What's that middle school off of Roberts Road? Fisher. Fisher. I joined the jazzercise group there. 40 years ago, and I've been going. Wow. I started two evenings a week while I was working, and then I became, when I retired, I went five times, five mornings a week, and then that kind of, dialysis kind of curtailed that a little bit, but I was still going three times a week until the pandemic hit. So I missed that because I made a lot of friends, especially in the Los Gatos area, and we all, um, meet at class and then we go to breakfast sometimes we meet for lunch we celebrate birthdays with my friends from jazz to size and um uh you know i have friends that i go out to lunch with and dinner with and all, all that was stopped during the pandemic so it's very um like everybody else it's it's you know, I, I can understand why people go out to the beaches and out to the parks and everywhere because you just can't stay home 24 7, you know, and it's been hard, as you must know. Yeah. Yeah. And when I drive around the streets, I see all these people, they're biking or they're walking, walking their dogs, you know, trying to get some fresh air, but now the air is. A little bit better today, right? Yeah. 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 Finally, some blue sky. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. For over a month, we haven't seen blue sky, and it's very getting depressing a little bit. But other yeah. than that, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> Have That's you great. found any creative ways to keep in touch with all of your friends and family? Yes. Uh, FaceTime with my niece in San Francisco every so often, and. But I, I've gone to see my niece in Mountain View, and we've eaten dinner out in her backyard. Mm -hmm. uh, and other than that, even my sister, the one here close to me, um, I talked to my younger sister. We talk on her front porch. She doesn't even let me in her house. <laughs> <laughs> And a big thing is going to shop at Lenardi's, you know. That's what people say. They just go out and do a little bit of grocery shopping. Other than that, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Well, uh, it sounds like you're making the most of this time, even though it's a little bit difficult and hard to stay at home. And I'm glad that uh, you're still working and, you know, that's able to... Um, that Give helps Ment men yeah. mentally, mentally it helps you, you know, working yes. and I said um, when all this virus thing happened, I said I looked forward to going to dialysis so I could see other people. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. It's good to find the silver lining and all that and all the mm -hmm. stuff that's going on, yeah. Um, well, the, se the second year I was in dialysis, the social worker put me into this 
contests for uh, dialysis patients, the healthiest dialysis patients um, in the nation. And I came in, I came in with it first in, in our area. Wow. Yeah, as the healthiest, because I was still jazzercising and working and um, I was working like a couple days a week and all my other social activities. And I, I wanna, I got a little certificate for that. So, wow, congratulations. That's quite an yeah, accomplishment. They, they, they said that. <laughs> They said that I was one of the healthiest. So, I mean, I'm I'm uh, on my eighth year of dialysis, but you know, my life is still pretty normal. You know, I go from dialysis with a change of clothes and I go to work at the office. Wow, that's amazing. So, uh, a lot of people get a little depressed, I think, when they start dialysis, but I haven't, I haven't, I've just always been kind of pretty upbeat about it. You know, that's the way life is and I just make the most of it. So I don't know if I told you much about lost data, but oh, in the you early did. years. You, you told us so much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we're, we learn so much from you and all the other people we're interviewing and it's really great to hear everyone's stories and their experiences here. Yeah. Oh, I remember the one story I was thinking about. There used to be three cherry trees on the on the ranch. And when we were in grammar school, we were, um, yeah, we were still in grammar school. We, boys would pick the, the cherries off the tree. We would put it in little, uh, uh, brown bags, about like a pint or something, and we put it in our red flyer wagon, and we take it up to the road, Los Gatos Boulevard, which was Highway 17 at that time. There was no Freeway 17, so that was Highway 17, and the people would be going to Santa Cruz, and they would stop by, and uh, uh, the we must have looked like little ragamuffin kids selling <laughs> cherries off of the wagon. And we sell it for ten cents a bag. Yeah, wow. that was fun. Yeah, what a great memory. <laughs> yeah. Growing Sounds up on like a ranch was was yeah. Uh, yeah. A, a really fun time. You know. Yeah, that sounds. It sounds like you had a lot of great traditions every year with the mochi making, right. and um, I forgot the other one you mentioned. Oh. Seaweed, also the seaweed and mm -hmm. the what? The seaweed. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. 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 Yes, um, my grandmother would dry it on the top of the garage roof. The seaweed. Yeah. Great. <laughs> and then going to Los Gatos Creek and you know playing with the the cleaner water there <laughs> back then. Right. Right. That must have been really great. Yeah. And it must have been beautiful too. It still is beautiful. And I'm sure that's why you stayed close by and stayed in town all these years. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, is there anything else that you wanted to add um, just to talk about your experience here? No, I think that's, that's it. I hope I was informative enough for both of you. Oh, it was perfect. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, so, well, um, it sounds like uh, we got a lot of wonderful stories from you today, Aiko, and uh, we're really excited to share it with the community and hopefully lots of people will um, just be, be very encouraged by your uh, your I guess your pizzazz for life and doing jazzercise and all that stuff. And um, yeah, that this pandemic hasn't stopped you from being uh, very positive about your situation and all that too. So thank I'm you welcome. so much for sharing your time with us today. You're welcome. All right. I'm